Hello and welcome back to AEF-TV in association with Angerati. I'm now uh, uh, joined by uh, uh, Enrique, uh, who's the uh, Trade Com uh, Commissioner. Actually, I'll let you explain who you are very, very quickly to the camera if sure, you can. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm Enrique Manzanares. Thank you for joining us. I'm the Trade Commissioner of Spain for the uh, SADC region. And hence, my role is to try to promote business between Spanish companies and local companies throughout these seven or eight companies that I manage. And uh, Enrique, we were, we were talking a little bit off air about you know, what are some of the key issues, what, what were the, some of the great things you were saying. And you pointed to this concept of what's happened in South Africa as a as a little jewel of best practice or, or excellence, I, I think were your words. Can you just uh, elaborate a little bit more about what you're seeing there? What excites you so much about there? Yeah, I think the big uh, thing that happened here was that uh, after a number of uh, efforts that were not so uh, successful in the past uh, 10, maybe 15 years, to incorporate private sector into the major infrastructure investment uh, programs in South Africa. Finally, the South African national government found a way of uh, going by the book and more, mm. bringing the best technology and the best consultants around the world, including South Africa, of course, right. to pack up and develop these IPP repeat uh, program, which has been commended around the world as possibly the best at this very moment uh, around the world. So the impact, I think, is enormous for the South African uh, power sector. It is, uh, I hope, also a very important uh, element in terms of uh, industrial localization, because one of the key issues is that these tender documents include increase in local minimum content. Uh, that will grow beyond 60% in the upcoming tenders, and um, hence will have a, a, an important potential impact in employment. And uh, it's been done in such a competitive and transparent way that uh, I could say that nobody can be blamed mm. uh, but uh, the own bidders if they haven't won. Yeah. And we witness also that from the first to the second round of bids, tariffs have gone down dramatically. Consequently, I think that both in terms of what we could see in South Africa, in terms of the design of other sector in infrastructure investment projects, I'm thinking uh, transport, I'm thinking water, I'm thinking hospitals, penitentiaries, and what we could see in neighboring countries in, in, in Southern Africa, this real jewel, this uh, fantastic uh, uh, world uh, best practice, it can have an impact in the quality of the investment programs in infrastructure and hence be a, a very important factor of resource mobilization and transparency. So, so how can, or well, how do you think can that blueprint, uh, if we call it that for a second, uh, how can that be replicated in other, uh, um, either states or, or regions? Um, because South Africa has a pretty unique DNA in itself. Mm -hmm. So I would argue, is it, has it only been possible because it is South Africa? Or do you think it is possible in, uh, uh, as uh, you could clone that blueprint? Well, I think that um, it is uh, possible to replicate it in some countries, but indeed, as it was discussed recently in the previous session with ministers of uh, uh, Botswana, Namibia, smaller countries uh, where economies of scale don't exist and where industrial localization uh, cannot really happen, then let's say that we are losing one important factor for replicability in some of the, could we say, natural mm -hmm. places where we would expect uh, such a, um, an experience being quickly utilized. But I think that the fact that we talk uh, other sources of power, for instance coal, could also uh, be used uh, as, as a means of replicability. Mm. Because what we've seen is South Africa is uh, something that's worthwhile studying in depth. Uh, we've seen a very minor role of the multilateral agencies. 
we've seen that because of the uh, cumbersome procedures of the World Bank and the other multilaterals, even if uh, they offered South African government support, it wasn't used. Yeah. So, so they went for uh, simple and clear market uh, uh, instruments. So, so do you think that uh, there, there is a... Um, so, so you touched on some of the issues of the smaller states. Just by sheer physical size, that model won't work. Um, but do you think there is an argument that actually if you were to cluster regions where you say, right, okay, well, we've, we're, you know, we've got this generation ability here, we've got that, the, let's say, hydro opportunity there, and it's like a, if we were to um, work as a, 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 an energy trading zone or whatever yes. it is, yes. that that could be something that's made to work? Absolutely. The name of that is uh, how to integrate uh, markets and make them uh, become real regional markets. Mm -hmm. Now we have the embryon, we have the cell milk for that, which is the SAPP, the South Africa, Southern Africa Power Pool. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's say that we need to improve the operation of SAR. And we also have to uh, convince the South African government to open for bigger regional dialogue, the process into which they are developing regional projects. So their attitude at the moment is South Africa, South Africa, rather yeah, than... Yeah, opening opportunities for a number of neighboring countries to become suppliers of power, mm. changing dramatically the nature of regional power markets because they used to be, in fact, suppliers of power for the rest of the region. So we're bringing in important investment opportunities in Mozambique, Lesotho, even up to the north at the RDC through very substantial investment uh, programs which will be regional. But I think that the discussion of how these projects are chosen, how they are actually implemented, uh, is something which would uh, deserve some uh, bigger doubt, yeah. if I may yeah. say so. And it's uh, not a critic, but it's uh, uh, something like, uh, let's talk regional on a, on a periodic basis. We can even try to implement that through the newly created uh, Spanish Southern Africa Chamber of Commerce. We, as we talk, as we speak, mm -hmm. I'm thinking that we may take the chance of becoming one of the sponsors of that dialogue, because mm -hmm. I think that even South Africa would uh, benefit from making it more transparent, yep. which are the neighboring countries which could, could be more keen to go for regional projects. And, and, and uh, when, you, when, you're, when you're looking at, uh, uh, in your role to uh, sort of have Spanish co uh, uh, companies invest in Africa and, and things like that, well, uh, what, what are you looking for? And what do you think needs to be done more of in order to sort of give Spanish companies confidence to to go out there. I'm not saying yeah. they aren't confident, but yeah, yeah. you'd clearly like more of them to yeah, be out absolutely, there. Absolutely, absolutely. We are very happy that we have around 100 Spanish companies mm. only in the renewable energy sector in South Africa mm. operating now. And we hope that that will have a spillover effect both in terms of mm. them becoming present in neighboring countries and then being more present in the other infrastructure investment programs mm. that I mentioned before. But definitely through this specific instrument that I mentioned, the Chamber of Commerce, the Regional yeah. Chamber of Commerce, uh, we hope to be able to, to create marketplace. We are hopeful that we, by creating delegations in the different markets, uh, we're planning for Maputo, we're planning for Namibia afterwards, before end of year, we're planning to have a delegation in Madrid to really see that we can help South African and South African business uh, better uh, access the Spanish and South African market. So yeah. this is uh, market creation, I would yeah. say. Yeah. And, and uh, what you were talking about earlier in terms of creating that forum for a wider dialogue and looking at a, 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 a regional dialogue or whatever, if we could blue sky for a second, that, uh, mm -hmm. I, I like that idea. Uh, how, uh, how would you see that manifesting itself and, and what are the sort of outputs that we could actually help create? Well, I think that the famous PPP, IPP formula, mm. making it more accessible, mm. okay? Less academic. Yes. Let's uh, speak more down to the ground in specific sectors. Let's see how we could design interventions in the different uh, 
regional sectors of infrastructure, railway, water, definitely energy. And uh, let's have the, the practitioners join and have a discussion where every stakeholder come up with their own views, their own opinions, and hopefully see governments uh, receiving the, the flow of ideas yeah. and hopefully an improvement in the way these programs are designed and maybe an extension of this IPP uh, Renewable Energy South African uh, mm. tender or family of tenders being generalized yeah. to the other power and the other infrastructure so, so you can create a forum of uh, best practice transfer Absolutely. and, and, and uh, knowledge and, exactly. uh, and things like that. Well, with, with the real stakeholders being there, I mean, mm. with the guys who are ready to put uh, their, may I say it, uh, billions of, of rands into it, mm. uh, and the uh, local uh, engineering companies that can benefit by mm. joint venturing with the Spanish or not. Surprise, something like that doesn't exist already. Well, yes, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> why not now? Why did not now? Let's, yeah, let's yeah, try yeah. to fill the gap. Well, that, uh, on that note, I, I think on that optimistic note, because I, 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 I think there is uh, there is something in there, and uh, I, I think maybe uh, it promotes an off-air discussion to sure. see. Well, hang on a minute. Can, can, we, can we actually spin something up here, which would be quite cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, so, uh, from a short dialogue, uh, uh, Enrique. Thank you for joining us and, uh, and uh, uh, thank you for being here at the event. Uh, just before we leave, um, one last situational question. We're, you're at AEF. If I could ask you to pull out one highlight of the day, because we're at the end of the day, for you personally, you know, uh, uh, what would it be? Well, I think that maybe this uh, that I was mentioning before is becoming more apparent now. Because of the IPP renewable energy success in South Africa, I'm seeing some kind of more uh, open networking between uh, representatives of governments and uh, the, the private sector people. Yeah. And that, frankly, is the really important thing that this conference could yeah. help uh, move forward. Well, well, if we both look out there, it's happening right before our eyes, That's isn't it? I, I, I see some ministers talking to people uh, uh, as we speak. So uh, once again, Enrique, thank you for joining us and uh, uh, thank you for watching as well. Thank you.